This is Soji Meguro, the lead soundtrack composer for Persona 3, 4, 5, Catherine, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, Digital Devil Saga, and many more, and he stands as the most diverse composer in gaming. As a composer, it's not rare to find him blending rock, jazz, and hip-hop all into one song. Maguro is an ever-evolving artist. His initial output in the early 2000s is marked by fast guitars and distorted, static-laden vocals that hard industrial metal bands of the era such as Nine Inch Nails and KMFDM were renowned for. In contrast, his most recent work with Persona 5 demonstrates an attempt to keep up with the mainstream revival of soul and jazz-influenced music like Solange and Adele in America and Shina Ringo in Japan, complete with its syncopated percussion and orchestral flares. He's also not afraid to integrate heavy trance influence as well as drum and bass with all of the heavy drums and driving electronics that implies. One of the most important elements of his compositions, though, is how simple most of them are, especially in contrast to most video game composers. For instance, let's look at his most recent battle theme. As big as this song sounds, it only truly has six elements to it. The bass, drums, keys, guitar, violin, and vocals. This is standard for most popular music, but is traditionally rare for modern video game music with its reliance on big orchestras. It's this simplicity that makes it so catchy. The less elements something has, the more memorable it is. This is the entire ideal that minimalism is built on. Guro seems to intentionally restrict himself to as few elements as he can manage for this exact reason. Many modern game composers will frequently opt for entire orchestras while composing. And while this isn't an inherently bad decision, many of them use it to create songs that are needlessly complex. And the more complex a song is, the harder it is to remember. For instance, compare that last song to the main battle theme of Final Fantasy XV.
It's by no means bad, but it lacks flavor or any element to call its own. The core melody gets lost and loses its character amongst thunderous drums, violins, violas, trumpets, flutes, French horns, cellos, and so on. And no one of those instruments stands out on its own. Compare this to one of the rare occasions McGurrow allows himself an orchestra. In this track, Maguro only allows himself the use of nine instruments. Violin, cello, bass, drums, guitar, flutes, trombone, French horn, and piano. And over the course of it, the strings and guitar alternate between lead roles while incorporating a large amount of melodic breaks, keeping the song dynamic and engaging. Maguro's use of mainstream instrumentals such as guitar and hip-hop bass percussion has a secondary effect of making the music feel familiar, thereby lending to the intimate tone that both the songs and the games they belong to frequently seek. For instance, much of the hip-hop-inspired music of Persona 3 would not feel exceedingly out of place playing in many modern retail stores. We seldom hear much orchestral music in our day-to-day -day lives while we're out shopping and casually going about our business. Far more often we hear hip-hop and rock, sometimes even jazz, and Maguro's focus on those mainstream genres allow Catherine and Persona to feel considerably more like day-to-day -day life than they would otherwise. A positive of this is it creates a contrast that allows the classical music and heavy metal he composes to bring an air of the extraordinary to whatever scene they accompany because it's so rare. And that rarity allows each of those songs to feel like a treat. He also frequently uses such opportunities to work in leap motifs, or melodies that are repeated over the course of several different songs. And nowhere is this better seen than in Persona 4 with the melody of I'll Face Myself. Repetition creates meaning, especially over the course of a story as long as Persona 4's. By using the same melody over and over again, we get to not only experience it in a number of different styles, but in a number of different contexts as well. And, as such, hearing the melody again elsewhere invokes those contexts and brings back those memories, which brings more meaning and weight to the new situation it's presented in. Finally, it would be irresponsible of me to not call attention to his preference for feminine vocal performances, particularly to evoke jazz and pop tones. Grasping it, 
Ultimately, Meguro combines all of these elements to craft works that are not only tonally consistent video game soundtracks, but easy listening ambient hip hop and jazz albums that contain occasional classical and aggressive sparks. Likewise, it's that approach that makes every new soundtrack he composes into a wholly new entity with its own genre and identity, and that is why he's the most diverse composer. While he decidedly has a style all his own, Maguro once has never fallen into a single genre, opting instead to move from metal to hip-hop to rock to jazz at a moment's notice regardless of what people may want or expect from him. Most of all, it may be his refusal to conform to conventions of his day, his rejection of big orchestras and embracing of popular music more than anything that makes his songs so memorable. And it's this simplicity and respect for mainstream music and love of repeated melodies that are responsible for crafting one of the most memorable songs in all of gaming. Mm -hmm.